Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to BWTM Sports. If you haven't been seeing the amount of videos you'd like to see, that's because we've got a membership system in place now. So please get across, smash the join button. Uh, that's next to the subscribe button and you'll get to see all the videos, have access to all the videos, plus the little perks that come with it as well. That yes, once again, thank you to YouTube that feel that they've got to put ads through everything. But yeah, anyway, so one of the perks you'll get is that you'll be able to come into the chat room and leave your comments in the chat room. Basically, a, a, a troll-free zone and uh, lots of perks to come with it live chats um exclusive videos that subscribers will not be able to see um which is the way forward i believe membership is the way forward community and membership spoken to you all about it before and um you know we're proud to be doing this now at bwtm so on with the show we hope you enjoy it let's see right i'm gonna talk about this man for a second so the last video i did I paid tribute to a fighter. One of the first fighters I started watching in boxing which was Gary Mason. So one of the things I also said was that I felt that the, the boxing media in particular uh, across YouTube uh, are not giving uh, younger fighters or fighters that are not being propped up by the propaganda machine um, the opportunity or the promotion. So, you know, I feel that YouTube channels who are into boxing and particularly YouTube channels that are going to go down certain agendas should spend time promoting um fighters that are lesser well known it might take a little bit more work it might not get as many views but when they make the big time trust me i can guarantee you having spoken to the likes of thurman and crawford and Usyk and fury when they become world champions um, you can say you did it when nobody else was watching or paying attention for those people who want to know a little bit more about Ray Robinson, well, let me just tell you a bit more about Ray Robinson. Okay, so his record is 24 with 12 KOs. Uh, he's uh, lost three times, uh, one KO defeat, two draws. Okay, so so he's act his career is active. He's the new known as the new Ray Robinson, USA for, US fighter, debuted in 2006. He's a welterweight southpaw. His height is five foot ten. The 78 reach at, um, and uh, that works at 198 centimeters. His residence of Philadelphia, his birthplace is Philadelphia. His manager and agent's name is David McWater. Okay, so it says that he's suspended by the New York State Athletic Commission indefinitely, uh, but it said that probably about Wilder and a few other fighters as well. I don't know why they put that up there, but anyway, so the sort of guys he's fought. He fought Ugas. He fought the Green Machine in, this, in a fight previous when the Green Machine was unbeaten. As we know, the Green Machine fought Terence Crawford. The connection between Terence Crawford and this man, Ray Robinson, is that Ray Robinson beat Terence Crawford. He was the last guy to beat Terence Crawford in the amateurs. And Terence Crawford isn't too happy about that. Till this day, as they'd say. He also fought Josh Kelly on that famous night that um, Katie Taylor was, uh, in my opinion, beat by the part-time police officer. And um, Josh Kelly was also beat by uh, Ray Robinson quite convincingly that night, but yet uh, it was given a majority draw. So Ray Robinson is one of these guys that's not uh, got a promoter as such. He's not got a big name promoter behind him. Behind him. So he's the B-sided fighter, in other words. In other words, that means that he has to get a knockout to get a draw in these promoter's cards. So you know how it goes in boxing. So I just thought that I would give him some props. Why not? Give him some props. Talk about him a little bit. So you know who Ray Robinson is. Nobody can come and tell you afterwards that, uh, you know, we would give, didn't give him the props and the time. I think this guy goes on to be a world champion. At some point in time, this guy will become a world champion. I said it before about so many fighters. This guy becomes a world champion. Um, it's just time. He, he just have to bide his time and wait until something happens. Either a, a late notice comes in and becomes a champion. Underestimated. This guy is dangerous. As long as he keeps his head in the game and he keeps focus and keeps in shape, you know, and uh, even if he just takes ticking over fights, I would suggest for Robinson, just get ticking over fights. Get yourself known. Get yourself known more. Fight more. Get on the road. Ronald Winky Wright, as I said to you before, Ronald Winky Wright wasn't very well known. 
came to UK, beat up a couple of fighters, quite a few fighters across. And look what Ronald Winky Wright did. He ended up becoming the world champion, became one of the best fighters in the world. And, uh, you know, he'll definitely be in the name of the Hall of Fame when you talk about Ronald Winky Wright. So, you know, this man, and especially in, in the digital age we've got today, if Ronald Winky Wright could have done it, and there was no social media around when Ronald Winky Wright started out doing that stuff, um, you know, Ray Robinson could simply do that as well. Um, and what a simple he could do that as well. So shout out to Ray Robinson. We're backing you, man. We believe you'll become a uh, welterweight champion of the world, or maybe even like middleweight champion of the world. You saw last night Julian Williams get beat by Rosario, uh, Jelson Rosario. So it's all possible. It's all possible, my man. It's all possible. So on the subject of Julian Williams and that defeat last night, let's talk about Julian Williams and that fight against Jelson Rosario last night. I'll tell you exactly what I was doing last night. No word of a lie. I was playing FIFA when this fight was going on. <coughs> Pardon me. And to be honest, I didn't care for the fight. And look, these are two good fighters. Julian Williams is a good fighter. So let's get this straight first of all. Good fighter, talented kid. But vulnerable around the whiskers and not a great fighter. Am I surprised he was upset? Not really. Am I surprised he got beat? No, well, not really. Am I surprised he got stopped? Not really. Why? Here's my reasons. First of all, he beat Gerald Hurd, who I felt was grossly overrated and was a guy who was blocking punches with his face. Go and look at his tapes. Go and watch him fight. He was blocking punches with his face. If you're blocking punches with your face, eventually somebody's got decent hands, it's going to tag you. Exactly what happened against... Uh, and, and, and he's actually the same size as you or big at the weight himself or can hold his own. This is what happened. And Julian Williams did just that against Hurd. And you saw what happened to Hurd. Hit the deck. Julian Williams winning a unanimous point decision against Gerald Hurd. And a guy, that, a fighter that I didn't rate very highly. <coughs> now, I've been saying this for a long while. When I said Kel Brook should have fought Gerald Hurd, and he should have, he should have swerved Errol Spence and moved up and fought Hurd. And when that was Hurd, when he just became IBF champion. So he didn't know what he was doing as champion at the time. Didn't know what he was kind of, he only just became champion. Great time for Kell Brook uh, to jump up and become world champion uh, against her. They decided to go and take Errol Spence and the rest is history. Now, Jilly Williams already been sensationally knocked out before. So when people say they were shocked, well, when you overrate someone, you overrate fighters, this is, you're going to get shocked all the time. Every week there's going to be a headline of people getting shocked and the word upset. I'm only upset when a genuinely, genuinely world-class fighter gets beat by a guy that's underrated all, or a guy that we just didn't see coming. That's a shock. That's a shock. But this with Julian Williams was no shock because Julian Williams is a good fighter. He wasn't great. He, was, he certainly isn't a superstar fighter. And his chin was suspect. So, really? Shock? No, uh, just a guy that fought was unified champion, got beat. The unified champion he beat wasn't great. It was just good, decent, or weight bully, really. And it is what it is. I have, I'll have to look at Jelson Rosario a lot more. Now they talk about Rosario versus Brook. Well, look, here's what I've got to say about that point. Kel Brook has not fought for how long? And the last time he was fighting... He was getting tagged with right hands, left, right, and center. In the end of the fight, I mean, Julian Williams must have been exhausted or completely out on his feet because the uppercut that Jelson um, Rosario hit Williams with, you only get hit with an uppercut like that is when you're exhausted or, or you know, you're so bit badly stunned. You get hit with an uppercut like that. Somebody said, was that a, a fair stoppage? Damn right it was a fair stoppage. I mean, if you get hit, look, if you look at the uppercut again, the guy takes his time to line the uppercut up. He takes his time to line the uppercut up, Chelsea, uh, Rosario, and hits him with the uppercut. Uh, Kel Brook needs a warm-up before he goes anywhere near Jelson Rosario. Um, a decent warm-up as well. Um, so, um, good morning, Denise Wards. I am wondering if he was hurt before the fight. He has been inconsistent. Well, look, it's not just about being inconsistent. The fact, and that's a fair point, uh, 
J-Rock is up and down. Some guys are good underdogs and becoming champions. There are other guys that when they become champions, they become better. And the other guys, when they become champions, they become worse. What do you mean by that? I mean, by some guys, when they become champion, they've been so hungry and wanted to get to that position, they kick on. There are other guys that feel they're entitled to be champion. And when they become champion, they're like, well, I'm champion. Well, I was always going to be champion. And they don't kick on from that point. So I don't know which one it is with J-Rock. Plus, the other thing is, my other question mark of J-Rock is his weight. Is he struggling in the weight category? Um, I don't know. Um, and I always wonder if got these guys. Richie Comey, another one who got knocked out the other night. Was, Tif uh, was Lopez that good? Or was Comey struggling at the weight? I always wonder about these older fighters. And I don't mean older fighters, low weight categories. I don't mean older like the 35 and 36. I'm talking about older, I mean, they're 30, 31, 32. I always ask myself the question, even 29, 30. When they're rocking around that age and the low weight divisions, I always ask myself this one question. How are you doing for the weight, son? How are you doing at the weight? Are you struggling to make the weight? If so, are you struggling to cut weight? The same with Tony Rock, with Tony... Um, Harrison that fought the other night. Are you struggling to cut weight? How are you cutting this weight? Uh, you know, what are you doing before the fights? Are you spending the time cutting weight to, make, to for fight night? Or are you actually staying active and keeping at a reasonable weight? So you only have to lose a few pounds as opposed to having taken off 10, 15, 20 pounds. These, these are the questions I ask myself over and over and over again. So when I see these cats getting knocked out now, there is no surprise. Because either they're living their life in a way that's not correct, or they're not cutting the weight, or they're just not that good. And because of the PBC, Matchroom, uh, you know, top rank, Box Nation, Frank Warren's, whatever, BT Sports, because of all that stuff, wranglings, all that's going on there, everybody's trying to promote their fighter to be better than they actually are. So the product is decent which means they, that makes them good. The product which is good ends up being great. The guy that's a decent fight ends up being a, a star, and the star becomes a superstar when you haven't really earned the stripes to be in that position. But because of your promoters and because of a, a, a broadcast of power, you have got this rating that you really don't deserve. J-Rock was a unified champion, but in all honesty, he was a guy that was holding belts. That's it. That is, people say that is brutally honest, but that's how I see it. He's not. Tell me what makes J Rock so great. I, I don't know. He beats uh, Joe Hood. What made Joe Hood so great? I mean, a lot of these guys in their careers will define and find out how great they are. You know, when they retire, then we'll read really we study their greatness when they've retired. You know, um, so that's it. That that's kind of why I look at it. I can't really turn around and say to you, you know, well, you know, J Rock was. He's just a good fighter. Nothing more, nothing less. Nothing sensate, nothing great about him. I mean, I think J-Rock, well, what does he do that's sensational? Nothing. What does he do in his boxing skills that stand out? Nothing. So, am I as much as this sounds brutally honest and, 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 and harsh and maybe not blowing smoke up certain fighters' asses, and, um, you know, which is something that uh, a lot of channels do just certainly blow fighters up because, you know, they're, they're falling into that category of, of, of agenda pushing. One side's pushing agendas, you're pushing agendas. Just call it down the line for what it is, man. Good fighter, got beat. That's it. By another good fighter, they've got beat. How good is J-Rock? Don't know. How good is Rosario? I don't know. How good is Kel Brook? Now, I don't know. If Rosario beats Brook, does it mean anything? Not really, because I don't think, I think Kell Brook is finished. So, we still don't get any questions answered. Um, you know, Rosario versus Charlo, we may get more questions answered there. Rosario versus Harrison, we may get more questions answered there. You know? Um, so that's that kind of just the way I kind of see it. I just don't want, I don't want to blow things up. And I guess it's because now of my own personal interest in the world of boxing, which has changed so much. <clears throat> and really getting closer to fighters, I kind of got to see things as they are, not seeing things as I'd like them to be, or, you know, getting carried away with fighters for no reason. Again, I said this about Tank Davis. He's a good fighter, but he's no superstar. 
because you've got a superstar promoter, because that guy did so much in his career and fought the great, fought some great fights or fought in some very good fights or was a moneymaker, that doesn't mean that you, that doesn't equate because you're going to do that. You know, because I'm friends with, um, because I'm friends with Don King, that doesn't mean I'm going to be a great promoter. I may, I may learn things from Don King. I may strive to be better than Don King, but I may not have the influence about Don King has. Do you, do you get what I'm saying here? Because I'm, because I'm associated with, it doesn't mean that I am a superstar. I have to put the work in that they put the work in for. And if they weren't getting props, when they were, when, when, when they were like, when Jake, like a Tank Davis, when Floyd was young, he wasn't getting the props that Tank Davis has been given, superstar and stuff. And Floyd was fighting far better opposition. Let's have it be said. All right? So let's stop this nonsense about superstars and stars and, and shock upsets. If you're upset and you're shocked, you just don't know boxing. Or if you don't know, it's not even you don't know boxing. You've just got um, the word mind controlled or manipulated by the same media that you're calling out to. You've fallen for the trap. You've been okie doped that's what it is. But I guess these guys now have to stick to the script in it because they've been saying this guy's a great fighter here, a great fighter there. Well, to save face now, you've got to call it a shock. You've got to call it a shock. Because if you don't call it a shock, it kind of exposes you as a pundit or a commentator or boxing expert, doesn't it? Because you've been chatting around saying, this guy's a great fighter. He's world class. He's this and that. Well, now you've been exposed. But we're not going to talk about that as a commentator, are we? Because commentators don't often turn around and admit when they're wrong. Or they certainly don't admit, certainly on YouTube, they don't turn around and say, hey, you know what? I've been exposed tonight. Very few people will say that. They're like, oh, I got it wrong and move on. But they're the first to turn around and say, ah, I got exposed. He was a hype job. This is this sort of stuff that's going on today so will williams come back and become world champion again uh, but he probably probably you know he's got a skill set there and he's a good fighter will he be a dominant fighter in the world to wait uh, the light middleweight division no will he become a champion again probably but it, that's how it is that that's just the way i'm seeing it now for him you know um you know, but if he fought Charlo again, I think Charlo would do the same thing to him again. You know, but that's just me. Just trying to keep it real and not, you know, get carried away. Congratulations to Jelson Rosario as well. I'm not taking away from that loss. Oh, I'm not taking away from that win for Jelson and the loss to Julian Williams. I'm just seeing it for what it is. I like PBC. I support with PBC. I ride with PBC, but... The script for me is trying to be as balanced as possible. That's my script. Yeah, if you can make the weight, like I said before, I think you should move up in weight now. But if he moves up in weight, you know, there's some people waiting for him up there as well. Hope you've enjoyed the show as always. It is so good now to be able to have these live shows and, um, you know, uh, be troll free. Uh, in, in regards to your question, Danny Brown, um, if you want to know whether there's going to be a rematch down the line between Robinson and Kelly, just check out the interview that is in the description box, which talks from Ray Robinson himself talking about who, when he was offered the when when the uh, Kelly fight was offered to when Robinson was offered the fight to Kelly for the rematch. What happened? Williams Harrison, yeah, you can see it happening, can't you? You can see that fight happening. You can see that fight happening. Um, I would give Harrison the edge because he's a puncher, or more of a puncher. But we'll see. We'll see, but I'd go Harrison. All right, I'm out of here. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to get on that membership, smash that join button, and become part of the movement. Thanks again for watching. You're watching BWT Sports, and we're out.